I hope you're ready for another little lesson from the kitchen. I really hadn't planned to do this because I, I'm not comfortable in the kitchen. I know I promised you a dressing recipe. I got in here and fooling around and thing. I got things in such a mess that I said no. Gotta cancel this one. So you're not going to get the dressing recipe, but I'm going to give you another one that I think you will like. Now this is in my cookbook, so if you have the cookbooks on page 77, you'll like this. Your guest will like it, and you can keep it for days, eat on it a little at a time, and it gets better every day. This is called strawberry salad. I've been making this for years and years. I only make it once a year, because that is to me, it's a special dish that you put on the table for Thanksgiving or Christmas. It's also a wonderful dish to use it for Valentine's Day if you're planning a party. Now, I had to uh, prepare part of it ahead because it has to had to refrigerate a little while so it would gel. And I'll show you what it looks like. This is a pretty dish I'm going to use. You can see the red in it. Okay. The strawberry salad recipe calls for, now you need to listen to me closely, it calls for strawberry jello and lemon jello. Now ordinarily they'd be the same size, but I didn't have a large box of lemon jello. I, I said it'll work anyway. So you can make it with the small boxes of Jello, or you can make it with the large boxes of Jello, and not change any of the other ingredients, and it works just as well. So these two things you have to have. We start with the strawberry Jello first. I prepare it, and I let the Jello gel a little bit in the refrigerator, get about halfway firm. And then I add strawberries. Now I bought strawberries, I cut them up and I sugared them and let them sit in the refrigerator for a while. But you can buy the frozen sliced strawberries if you like, uh, one just as good as the other. And I added the strawberries to the strawberry jello. After that, you add the, uh, add a can of either pineapple tidbits bits or crushed pineapple and I drain the juice off. Now I use the small can, you can use the large can. If you're planning on a larger crowd, you add the larger cans because that way it just goes further. For that you have to have either crushed pineapple or uh, pineapple tidbits, bits or you can even mix them. Now that's added to the strawberries and the strawberry jello. They go in the refrigerator till they are firm. You can see it, it wiggles a little. Now, when that is ready, you prepare the lemon jello. You prepare it just like it says on the box. If it's a small box, you add one cup of water. If it's a large box, you add two cups of water. You just follow the instructions on the box. My hearing aid is whistling, and I'm hoping you don't hear it too. So anyway, I went ahead and uh, heated my lemon jello on the stove. And now I'm going to add the cup of water, because this is a small box. I'm adding the cup of water. Stir it up, get it. Now, the recipe says to blend this with your, you've got a small mixer. I'm using this, this thing. Hope it works okay. Whoa, Woo. wasn't ready for that. But you wanna get it kind of foamy.
and drop it up. Whoa. Drop it over here in the sink. Um, went right down the inside of my bowl. Get that off so it won't be messy. Now, I've got my eight ounce cream cheese. I softened it in the microwave and I'm ready to uh, blend it into my, ooh, into my lemon jug. Won't you see how this looks? How it looks when it's foamy. Can you see it? Yeah, you can see it. All right. I'm going to, I think I'll, I think I'll use my uh, blender again because this is kind of thick. This is a very simple recipe, but it's so good, and it just seems like it gets better by the day. I'm uh, going to add the cool whip. I don't know if I'll add all of it or not. It's just the eight ounce size. I'll stir it up some. Get it blended. places here so you can see what I'm doing. I'm always doing things you can't see. Whip it up a little bit. I guarantee you you're going to like it. And it's that little surprise thing that you can serve your family that they haven't had before. They've had all the sweet potatoes, they've had the mashed potatoes, they've had the corn casseroles, of course green beans. I'd say there's always green beans on the table for Thanksgiving and Christmas, except one thing, I don't like green beans. I don't eat green beans. My mother always did complain about me being such a picky eater. But I got this far. Yep, I still say she thought I was her favorite daughter. You know, I wanted to tell you about my family a little bit so you know, you don't know who you're dealing with when you listen to me tell stories. There were seven of us girls. I was the youngest. My sister Inez was the oldest. By the time she got married, she felt like she'd already raised a family of kids. She wasn't ready to start on, on her own. She only had one daughter, and I could understand why. She had rocked all of us babies from the time she was seven years old. And in fact, I was married, I was born May 1st. 1936. She was planning to get married June 1st, 1936. 
You talk about somebody unhappy. A woman going to get married and she's watching her mother deliver another baby. Well, I could understand that too. I'd have been just like her. I'd have said, Mama, it's time to stop. Mama had two more after I was born. So anyway, Inez was like a second mother to me. She went first. She died of cancer. Then my sister, Velma. Velma was the one everybody loved, Velma. She was so sweet, so kind, so gentle. Mothers would even call my mother and ask if Velma could come to the house and play with her children because she was such a good child and she would read to them. And they enjoyed having her around. So she was that kind of sister everybody liked. Then there were the next two. We grew up in pairs. No, I forgot. I forgot my uh, second sister. My second sister was Ada. She and Inez went everywhere together. In fact, they graduated from high school together. They were beautiful girls, and I don't say that because they were my sisters. Anybody that ever knew them would have told you those were beautiful girls. In fact, all of my sisters were very pretty. So, 82, she, she was the last to go. She died about four years ago. She was 99, so it was her time to go. And then there was Velma. Velma died of ovarian cancer 10 years ago. 10, yeah, 10 years ago. Next were the two sisters, Ben May and Jeanette. They were in high school together. They went to all the parties together. They did everything together. And Jeanette married when she, before she got out of high school, she married her, her sweetheart who went in the army in World War II. And she was just a kid. I don't, we always wondered why mama let her get married that young, but we decided mama want, would give her one less mouth to feed during the war, because it wasn't easy. I'm putting my pecans in. I've got chopped pecans now. You can see the consistency of this. There's Cool Whip, cream cheese, and lemon jello. Now go the pecans. Dump them right in there. Mix this up. I think I could use more pecans. I should have, but I can add some later. Now here's what I'm going to do. Let's put this over here where you can see it. This is heavy. I don't know if I can handle it or not. We'll see. Maybe I can get a good grip on it. Right here, yeah. I'm pouring this right on top of the congealed strawberry jello. I don't like any waste when I'm cooking. I like to use every bit of it. I watch some of them pull the dish away and it'll have, look like it's got a cup full of ingredients in and I think oh how can they throw that away there's too much there so I'll empty mine out and oh this is pretty can you see it fit from the outside oh yes you can can't you see how pretty that looks 
I've got a few extra pecans here I thought I'd put on top. And in fact, if you've got strawberries, you can slice your strawberries. You know how they do the little slices and lay it around the top. I happen to use all of my strawberries. So I'm just going to add pecans around the top. This is the simplest recipe you can come up with. And honestly, I don't think you can do better. You can't go wrong, Joe's Jello. And let's see, let's put one right in the middle. Now, see how that looks? See how it looks from the side? Now, wouldn't you be proud if you set that in the center of your dinner table for Thanksgiving? I think you ought to try it. I'll give you the recipe one more time. And I'm going to give it to you with a large box because you're feeding a crowd and you want to have plenty. Make sure you have a, a pretty dish like this. But if you're going to make it for salad, put it in a 9 by 13 flat Pyrex dish. That way you can cut it in little squares, put it on your lettuce leaf, add your crackers to the side of the dish, and you've got a very pretty uh, salad dish for your guest. But I didn't even realize I had this bowl until I got the honey. Came out with this one. This is one of my favorite sandwich glass bowls, you can see. I thought that looks a little big. And I went looking for another one, and this is the one I found, and I'm really pleased with it. It's just perfect, just size, everything. So here, you've got one large box of strawberry jello, one large box of lemon jello. And you're gonna follow the instructions on the box. First, you prepare your jello. You put it in the refrigerator and you let it start to get firm when it shakes pretty good. Then you're ready to put in your sliced strawberries. You can buy the frozen ones. You can cut your own and add sugar and let the, the sugar dissolve and, and uh, strawberries absorb the sugar and put them in. And then you can add either crushed pineapple or pineapple tidbits. Drain the juice off. All that goes in the red layer. You're gonna put all of that in there, stick it back in the refrigerator and let it completely gel. Then prepare your lemon jello, just like the box said. When you get through, you add cream cheese. Soften the cream cheese, let it sit out or either put it in the microwave and get it soft enough so that it's easy to blend. One eight ounce is cream cheese. You add to that uh, that to your lemon jello, but with the lemon jello, you whip it like I showed you, and get it looking foamy, and you add your cream cheese. Blend it with your mixer, however you want it. Do it. You can do it with spoon, fork, whatever. Just takes longer. When you do that, then you add your Cool Whip. I set my cool whip out so that it it wouldn't be so firm and hard to mix. You add eight ounce cool whip with it. Blend it all together and you uh, chop up about a half cup of pecans and add to the mixture. When you do that, then you're going to pour it on top of your completely gelled 
strawberry layer. And I would suggest that you trim your two or three strawberries and lay them on top for looks. In this case, we're just using the pecan. They'll work just as well. So here you have your strawberry salad, and I guarantee you, and as soon as it sets a little while, I'm going to be eating it for su supper. Whoop. <laughs> I'll be eating it for supper. Now, I'm going to go ahead and put that in my refrigerator. I want it to get started. It is very heavy. And guess what I'm having for supper? My harvest soup. This is left over. I took some to my sister and I made chicken salad and took that and when I walked in the door, the first thing she said was, I told you not to bring food. I said, well, I had it and I wanted to bring it. She said, I knew you would. I knew you would. Okay, let's see how this tastes. Mm. Oh, that's good. You're gonna like it. Now here's something I wanna show you. Here's a few things. Jan and I, of course, had to uh, do a little goodwilling and thrift shopping while we were at my sister's. And we couldn't find too many shops. I mean, you're, you're talking about farm country. Hey, those farms go as far as the eye can see. So we found a few little shops. One of the first things I found was this. This is Fostoria American, or it's supposed to be. I have another one like it. When I got it out and matched them up, they weren't exactly alike. I realized the handles were different and the other one was heavier. This isn't Fostoria American. It's Whitehall, but that's okay. I bought it because I liked it and because I can use it when I do uh, set a table. It's a little relish dish. So I've got two of them now. One is Fostoria American. The other one is Whitehall. That's okay. Well, Jan came in one day. She said, is this Fostoria? I said, it sure looks like it. Well, I picked that up at Goodwill. I thought she'd like to have it up. I, I said, look at the feet. We looked at the feet. I said, yeah, it's Fostoria American. Well, and guess what I just now found in it? It's a good thing I wasn't looking for my green earrings. Two pairs of them. They're in my little dish. So now I know where they are. I need green earrings. You can find things like that all over my house. You just Anything that's got an opening at the top, better look down in it and see what's inside. Okay, another day she walks in. And she said, do you have one of these? I said, no, but I have been wanting one. I've got the tall picture. This is a small water picture. Now, it's not the one that has the lip, the lip that holds the ice, but it's still a small water picture, and I just love it. She got it for $3.99. This cost 25 cents. Uh, let's see what else. Oh, this. My sister lives in Mennonite country. During the summer, she goes to the Mennonites down the road from her, and that's where she buys her tomatoes and her vegetables. She happened to serve dinner that night, cut up one of the big tomatoes, and Jan said, where in the world did you buy this tomato, the best tomato I ever ate? She said, I buy them from the Mennonites. So, I forgot what I was going to tell. Oh, 
we went in a little shop. We just ran across it by accident. It was an Amish thrift shop. It was spotlessly clean. They had lots of glassware and dishes. And I do believe they washed every one of them before they put them on shelves. That's where I got 25 cent relish dish. That's where I got this beautiful candle holder. I just fell in love with it the minute I saw it. I had been looking for candle holder, the double. I never dreamed I'd find one that had three stick candle holder. And this was it. Folks, it's very heavy, it's very nice, perfect condition. I paid a dollar seventy five for this. I couldn't have had a better buy or anything I like better. But the next thing I want to show you, I got the little dish, serving dish, print dish bowl as far as I'm concerned. But one of the Fostoria pieces is called a hair receiver. Now most people would see they this fit together, fit together. See, those fit right down in there together like a puzzle. You notice the top has a hole in it. Now anybody else would look at this and say, that's a candle holder. It has to be a candle holder. Well, if you want one of those little stubby candles in it, yes, it could serve as a candle holder. But I remember my mother having one of these. It was called a hair receiver. Now, if you're not familiar with hair receivers, that's because you're young. They had re hair receivers when my mother was young and she used them. When the women brushed their hair, and all the hair, most of them had long hair, they'd put it up in buns, they would, would put it uh, on those uh, Rats, they call them rats, that you wrap around your head and you wrap your hair around them. So when they brushed their hair, they took the hair out of the hairbrush and they pushed it down inside the hair receiver. In those days, women had spinning wheels and they had other methods of spinning yarn. They would spin the sheep's wool. They also would spin human hair. And it would come out just like if you've ever watched anybody with spinning wheel when they're doing the sheep's wool, it comes out in long strand. You've been in a yarn shop, all about those strands of yarn. That's how they're done. That's how it's done. That's how the human hair was done. I remember seeing a beautiful, beautiful frame, old frame with the convex, convex, concave, convex, okay, convex glass. And inside that glass was a beautiful floral design. The flowers were made from human hair. It was beautiful. I've always wished I had one, and I wish I knew how to spin yarn like they did. So anyway, that's just to do a little lesson on hair receiver. Some of them aren't separated like this, but if you you see a dish that looked like this, all one piece, has the big hole, it's about two inches across. And it's in an antique shop, especially. You can assume it's a hair receiver. 
So you've learned something today. This is another little dish. I sold you this one, yeah. This, I, I believe this was probably a little mayonnaise dish or jam dish. Because Australia American has all kinds of dishes. Anything that you need for a table setting, they've got it. So anyway, I'm going to eat my harvest soup for supper with club crackers. And I'm going to give my strawberry jello, strawberry salad, time to congeal a little more. And that's what I'm having for dessert tonight. I might even offer a little bit of it to one or two of my neighbors, but they're not going to get much because I love that stuff. So, this is my lesson for today. And I hope you do try this recipe. You won't be sorry if you do. And your friends will want the recipe too. You just tell them they can buy my cookbook. They can go on Amazon and get that and they can get the recipe with the cookbook. And I'd appreciate it too. So I hope you all enjoyed watching the uh, videos of the ginkgo trees. The leaves are all off the trees now and starting to look like winter. I'm not looking forward to it, but I tell you one thing. When it snows, I can look out the window from the eighth floor and I'm looking down on the snow, not up at it. I'm looking down and it just looked like a forest of white. And if it gets icy, you've never seen a prettier scene in your life than when those trees turn to ice, they glisten like diamonds. And in a way, I'd like to see it, but I don't want to have to go through it. I've been through that once before and our utilities were cut off for seven days. That's no fun. But we got through it okay and we'll do it again if it happens. So, enjoy your evening. Make the salad and let me know how you liked it. Go ahead and sample it now before Thanksgiving because you'll be ready to eat it a second time. And thank you for watching me. Bye-bye.